Oh yeah, the dance has begun. And we have a very special dance today because we are celebrating that JB Live hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is awesome. Yay! Yay! And we have a guest who just hit a million subscribers Yay! on YouTube here. <laughs> so but now I typically like do my little intro and then bring in the side shot. So everyone's like, oh, she's back. But we brought Just Pearly Things back because you were so excited about Pearl. I got so many messages like, oh my God, I love her personality. I love the collab. So I know she's only here for a short time right now. So I was like, let's get her back in studio. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Last time it was more of an interview because it was our first time sitting down together. Today I decided, you all know how I usually run my show which is live reacts to all these crazy women. I said, well, how cool would it be if I had Pearl here and we did live reacts together to modern women? So we're going to react to things like the patriarchy, body count, equality, fat shaming. There's a fun per uh, tweet from Pearl on that I'm going <laughs> to ask her about. Also, you all know I covered the Vice uh, panel that Pearl was on. So there has been some follow-up. Some tweeting has gone on <laughs> It's perspired. <laughs> that panel is like the panel that won't die. It's like, so we're going to ask her about that, too. But we're going to dig right into it. Pearl, welcome back. Thank and you And congrats. A million? I mean, man, how does that even happen? That's like a number too big to imagine. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just woke up. I was like, oh, a million. <laughs> I saw, but I, I mean, it's like crazy. I think you're going to be, my husband and I were talking about it. We're like, I think this is going to be the top channel in the whole space very quickly because it's you and Fresh and Fit really like right at the top. Yeah. I mean, there is others like Sneeko was at 1.7 million, but they took him they down. They took him down. Yeah. They and now of, he's on Rumble. Yeah. They kind of, um, it's like when the guys get to a certain level, they just take him down, huh? Mm. I wonder if that's true. I wonder if some of it is like that we get away with saying some things because I, we are female. I think we do, honestly. Um, or maybe I'm next. We'll see. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm next. They'll take me down. <laughs> no, no, no. We can't have that. We cannot have the Matrix. And we're also I'm going to ask you about the Matrix a little bit in terms of I don't know how political you are, but mm -hmm. are you getting more into that? Are you interested in that red pill angle? We'll get there. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. So the chat is open, everyone. So we want your questions. We want your comments. As usual, Super Chats are going to get read. Deli's here to read them. Let's start with, we've got a panel from hmm, whatever podcast. You know how it goes. We're going to play. We're going to stop and go. And your favorite two ladies here are going to respond. So let's hit it. 2652. His suggestion. Perfect. I don't know if it's the right move. He said the way to fix all the world's problems. His words, not mine. <laughs> is put a woman's body count on her forehead and that'll fix oh. everything oh. thank you so much that was that was so helpful that was so helpful <laughs> it, it you, actually would so i'm gonna open it up to you guys do you think that that would fix a lot of problems i would like to comment on this with guys too because there's a lot of guys that will have their whole phase too i think just because someone had a hoe phase in college doesn't mean that they aren't worth loving when they're in that period later in life. And I think Andrew Tate is referring to people in college and younger people when looking for people to hook up with, okay. people to get in a Let's relationship with. No, he's not. He was talking about everybody. So body count mm -hmm. on a woman's forehead. If you could literally put that number on a woman's forehead, mm -hmm. they're commenting about Andrew Tate saying, oh, that would solve everything. I thought about it and I said, you know, that's brilliant. Because if you think about it, if that happened, the women would be too embarrassed to let that count go up. So uh -huh. they would stop behaving badly. You have a lot less promiscuous women. Then the guys would be, they wouldn't want to hang out with a woman that had like 500 yeah. smashed across her yeah. forehead. So that behavior would just get removed from society. Does that? What do you think? I don't think it would. You don't think so? So how would no. they get? Are we erasing it? I, no, no. I think the girls would just do it anyway, and the betas would bear, marry them anyway. Come on, guys are marrying single moms. You're telling me the body can't? I, I would like to think, you know, mm. but the realistic in me is like, nah. Like these girls are putting thirst traps on Instagram. <laughs> They're putting, they have their, their other two baby daddies, da, da 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 Someone still marries them. They might not have a body count, but they may as well with their 10 ass shots on Instagram, Diane. But you don't know, <laughs> uh-oh, she's bringing out the names. I just make up Right names. at the start of the I show. Just, I just make there, up. You know there's a Diane out there that's like, how does she know I did that? How does she you know? know what I mean, though? It's like the guys still date these girls anyway. 
But do you, th I mean, I, I, think, help a little I think there would be humiliation though, because when you ask girls about their body count, like you see it on these panels, they get like all like, mm, you know, they're yeah, embarrassed yeah. about it. So there's gotta be some segment of the female population that would just either stop or they'd be self-conscious. And then I think about it and I'm like, okay, well, if less women would be behaving badly because they'd be worried about that body count going mm -hmm. up, there'd be less guys hooking up with those girls. Maybe like that whole hookup culture would kind of just quiet a little bit. My, I'm hopeful. What can I'm, I say? I'm just kind of, I'm just a real, like, I would like, ideally, yes. Mm. Do I think that would actually happen? No, because again, like, the guys are still marrying the single mothers. Mm. They're still, they're still dating the girl that they know damn well has had 20, 30, 40. Like, they, they might not have a sign, but they may as well. <laughs> like, with Instagram, you might as well have a sign. <laughs> Can you imagine you go out? You go out somewhere, like a public place, an amusement park, and there's just women walking around with numbers, just body counts all over you the walk place. By, you walk by 75. Woo! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Only Andrew Tate would think of something like that, I have to say. What do you make, though, of the reaction where she the next girl original, like automatically comes in and says, well, that's not a reason not to love someone. And that's, it's almost like immediately becomes this emotional argument, whereas what I think a lot of people are just saying in the rational space is just, it is different for men and women because men and women care about different things. It's just a reality. It's not about whether you're worthy of love or whether you're, aside from that, have good traits or good characteristics. It's just a reality that if guys know that count is high, they're not going to want to wipe you up in the same way. Yeah, no, it's true. Like, I don't, I, the girls are like arguing, is water wet? Like, water is wet. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, men throughout all of time have not liked promiscuous women. Like, I don't make the rules. We just tell you what they are. They're like, is it wet? Why is it wet? Was it He's always wet? He's insecure if he thinks it's wet. It's just is like, it my fault? That's like, girl, you're wet for everybody. <laughs> like, is it? Well played. Well played. Well played. Let's keep playing it. Um, Let's keep, let's see, I don't remember if there's more in there that I wanted to get to, but let's keep playing it. But if you take his claim towards just all women in general, everyone has those periods in their life, you know? It, not, I mean, everyone. It not, not everyone. Not everyone. That too. Yeah. Okay, pause that, Kelly. Like, I, Speak for so, yourself, Rebecca. <laughs> that's the other thing, right? This like, oh, everybody goes through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not everybody slutty. Not everybody has that faith. Why do they say that? I know girls that were virgins till they were married. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, not everybody has So that is faith. it just like, well, is that just like making excuses because she probably did it so yeah, she's well, got to like say, oh, we're I mean, all to in be, it together. To be fair, devil's advocate. In her, in her circles, probably. Everyone mm. probably has all the girls that she knows. Um, and it's much more common. Most girls, like, we, we go by 1920s, 30s standards. Most girls yeah. are absolute whores. <laughs> like, think about it. They're like, two, die here. Like, <laughs> I know. Get out of town. So, what is, like, the trendy, because you're young and I'm old, so I have to, like, mm -hmm. what is the trendy, like, hooking up means what now? Does that mean you're sleeping with somebody or does that mean you're, what, what is that? Hooking up? I, I would think that's sex. But. Because everybody's talking about body count, but there's mm -hmm. also a whole bunch of women we don't talk about, which is like the do everything but. Oh, the, yeah, the, the and, virgins. Yeah, it's like I'm a virgin. I know that type of virgin, the virgin. It's like I'm a virgin. I'm I actually, untouched. In the meantime, they're doing wait. all sorts of nasty on the side. Let that's me, just not, you know, it's not sex per se, mm -hmm. but it's stuff. Let me ask a question. Okay. <laughs> All right, you got two girls, okay? Right. One, girl one, body count of 10, head count of two. Other girl, okay, body count of two, head count of 10. Who you picking? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Higher body count? Nah, I want the lower body count is where I'm going. The body count. Yeah. It's interesting. Men, it depends on the guys. Some guys would, like, prefer the head count. I don't know. I knew somebody in the city. I'm not going to mention any names, but she had. Do it! Do it! She, Say your name! She, she had. She was a virgin, you know, She and, and, with, and proudly displayed that, you know, talked about it all the time. But she had. Let's just say she had eaten a lot of corn dog. I mean, it was a lot. I mean, it was, it was beyond. So I was like. Does it, That's, I is mean, it is really, it, is it is any it, different? Is it, is it that? I think it all needs to go on the forehead. I'm taking one step further than Andrew Tate. <laughs> any sexual activity you've been involved in, ladies, <laughs> let's put it on there. Let's put it on there. Okay, let's keep going. Deli. Not generalized, but a lot of people have those times in their life, and I don't think men or women should be judged for that. So 
Okay, I mean, wait, know. pause it. Can I say something? Um, I'm sorry. We judge men for not being able to get laid. And I'm right. sorry. You kind of should. Guys should learn how to get laid. And I'm vice versa. Women should learn how not to sleep with the whole football team. Rebecca. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true, though. But that's because there's a double standard in society. Like, you're allowed to judge men. You're allowed to rip on men. Mm -hmm. But if you rip on women, then you're a misogynist well, or you're, you're a woman hater or whatever it may be. Well, it's just like the world. You're doing what's easy. It's easy for men to not get laid. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for women to get laid. So it's, it's, it's like, of course, society's not going to reward you for doing what's easy. It's like, yeah, I, went, I went and cashed in on unemployment. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, Deli, let's keep going. And feel free if you want to pause something. Oh, feel I'll, free. I'll, I'll, She's I'll, all in. She made I, herself real comfortable. Uh, yeah, I'm Pearl's ready. like taking down the JB Live sign behind me. She's like, "Where's my name up on the up on the, up on the board?" <laughs> okay, let's keep rolling because there's a good part in here. I remember I want to hit. Let's keep going. That person, and then you find someone that you know matches your ideals a little bit more. Yeah, there's and even like but before I have you guys come in, I just want to go around the panel on that. So. Do you think that that would solve all the world's problems <laughs> if we put the body count on the floor? Not my word. That's Andrew Tate's suggestion. <laughs> you guys know he got banned, so maybe he's wrong. <laughs> he could be wrong. He got yeah, got yeah, he got, he he got, he got canceled. Everything. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> thoughts <laughs> thoughts on that? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that's completely superficial and not important when you're talking to people. I think that. I think that body counts a social construct in general. I don't think it's oh, productive. What? Pause it, it Deli. I mean, is it, see, this is the thing, too. Then they, like, vomit out, like, the Drew Afwalo to her. Oh, it's a social construct. It's not very much. It's not important to her. She's telling you right there, by the way. She's telling you it's not important to women, male body count. That's true. What she's not factoring in is that if you had a table full of guys, they would all care about it. Like, it's just not, they can't process it for some reason. Like, they can't, I think it's just an unwillingness to change their own behavior. And they know that if they actually internalize the fact that guys care about it, they have to come face to face with their own past and then also come face to face with their own present and the decision well, that they're making. And it's narcissism. It's like, I can do whatever and have no consequence. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's like they're, they're being told in real time, you ate the shit. <laughs> right. And it's like, just, just girl. It's okay yeah yeah and she goes on and on the patriarchy everybody's to blame by oh, her own the behavior pa the, the pa patriarch you think there's a patriarchy uh, no these all these females are just lazy i'm so tired of this yeah they say that they say oh everything's the patriarchy it's oh. a male structure and i'm, I'm always so held back with a million youtube subscribers <laughs> i know oh my God. i'm like girlfriend you put a bikini on you walked around the block and you got like more followers than a guy got all year so like i don't understand when they say the patriarchy i'm like media's on your side the news is on your side. The magazine covers are on your side. You mentioned on the Vice Panel, you talked about how there's quotas when it comes to employment. So I would love to know, like, the, the patriarchy's got you down. How? Tell me. Delineate the they ways. They never can. They never. The only answers they really give are men can sleep around and women can't. <laughs> but you're doing it. You are. You, you sure sure can. You know, I was like, you know what? I respect the sugar babies more than the hoes. At least they're getting money. <laughs> Y'all are giving this out for free. Do you have a lot of women on your show that that's that outright are out in it for the cash and say it? Uh, I have a couple sugar babies on my show that we talked about. Like, it's not a general topic, so even mm. if there are on there, it doesn't really come up, but there's like one or two. I bet you there's more that are they're just in it for the cash that don't want to vocalize that, but there's got to be a whole lot oh of them. Oh my gosh, can I, wait, I need to tell you something. Yeah. Okay, I just feel like we're going to be on the same wavelength. Let's okay, so I went on SauceCast yesterday, yeah. and they were talking about how much money you need to maintain yourself, like as a girl, like be a girl. Th th these girls said two grand a month, and I thought this was crazy. What are they doing for two grand that's a month? Okay. And then they're like, that's low. And I'm like, what the You know what, though? I'll tell you what. If it's not low if they're doing the Botox, the fillers, the lip stuff, all that. That's very expensive. I don't do any of that stuff. So for me, it's like I go get a facial, and I'm good to go. I, I would just rather look like myself and not have to. Like, I'll just get what I get. Why mm -hmm. are you? Y'all are trying to do all this. Just to get a guy that's like one, maybe two points. Just get what you get. Like, yeah. no guy wants to go to bed and wake up with a whole different... I needed to bring this up because I just felt like you would agree I'll tell you that. what it is, though. It's the Botox, the fillers, it's the nails... 
because the nails are constantly not only that you see those long those your nails long. look beautiful and I do mine short too but you see the long pointy I extent uh, I don't need it to look like claws it's not a weapon it's not a weapon <laughs> it's the hair extensions it's, <clears throat> that stuff really does add up if you're doing all that and then you know once you do that stuff the Botox all that toxic shit then you're addicted to it well I, I heard on my show would be like Pearl you don't wear makeup and I'm like I wear a little bit <laughs> and I can attest uh, there is makeup on yeah but then I'm like it's just compared to the other girls because it's like yeah well, the difference is though you wind up getting a boyfriend whatever and you wake up next to him the next day and he still knows it's you <laughs> that girl it went from Halloween costume then the costume came off and he's like Ooh, scared yeah <laughs> You don't want to scare yeah, him in the morning. Too grand. Like, it's a lot of cash. But I was thinking about it. I'm like, that's that kind of speaks to our culture because it's when you have a family like it, it, the, that's like a college fund. Yeah. So it's it's like you're kind of putting the money like towards you instead of for the family. You know. Also, like save some of that for yourself. I mean, invest in a home. And <sighs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I just. I don't care how much money I make. You won't spend, catch me spending two grand a month on what? On what? I just told you what it was on, but you're not doing any of that no, stuff. You're not no. going to have to. But so were they saying they expect guys to pay for that? For their they're, yeah, they were saying if they like stayed home, basically, like that's how much they'd want the guy to give them a month. Like, cause they're, he was asking me if I was to stay home, like how much a month I would need. And I've never really calculated. I know it's not two grand. I don't know what it is, but two grand. Um, they're like gym memberships. I'm like fifty bucks. Yeah, right. Like, is your apartment not of a gym? <laughs> like, most apartment buildings have a free gym to yeah, boot. So this is, I don't know. They're doing a lot of stuff. Pearl, <laughs> a lot going on in the frozen face area. Is all I'm gonna say. All right, and let's. Then, then they come out like. Like, you know, like yeah, <laughs> or the bug eyes, or like, you know, the weirdest thing about that, I talk about that all the time. I should have you back next time you're here and we'll talk about girly stuff. But like, the weirdest thing about it is a lot of women in my age bracket do that stuff because they're trying to look younger. And I always say, like, young people's faces move. Like, I'm looking at you right now. You're how old? 26? Mm -hmm. Your face moves when you talk. Now, mine does too. I haven't done any of that stuff. But like, the, the clearest giveaway that a woman is old, getting old, and she's unhappy and insecure is the frozen face. Like, no young person has a frozen face. Well, and it's like, I just felt like, <laughs> this is when I was younger, I was like, do I go the Botox route? I'm not gonna lie, like, I've thought about it. And I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna focus on everything else before I ever go down that route. Mm -hmm. Like, why wouldn't you do, you know, like, most of y'all would probably benefit more from just eating, like, cutting out sugar. Oh, yeah. Sugar ages the skin a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I love sugar. It's a though. whole other topic for I another. Deli's like, how did we get into this, and how do I get <laughs> out of this room? <laughs> like, somebody said, there's going to be, like, a help me sign that you're going to see up here above Deli's head in a second. All right, let's go to 3140. We talk about judgment. I may have bled into this, but let's see. I do that sometimes. Forehead. On the forehead. Is right. that the solution the world needs? Maybe to Andrew Tate, yes. But to the rest of society, I feel like it's definitely a no. Um, I, I don't think that everybody should know how many people that you slept with. I feel like that's kind of your personal information and for you and you only, right? I mean, unless you'd like to share it, then obviously that's great, right? If a guy asked you your body count, like a potential romantic partner, mm -hmm. would you refuse to answer that question? Um, I think it depends on the relationship that you have with that person. I mean, if it's just like, someone that you're going to hook up with okay, and they ask there. you well, so what's your should body they count? answer that should people answer that question is that information that they should give away I mean it depends like <laughs> are you being honest or do you want the best outcome if a girl slept with 30 40 50 got why on earth would she answer that yeah if she wants the best outcome see I think they could tell though yeah no you can that's what that's what I'm saying like are we going like what they should do or what would give them the best outcome because yeah. those are two different questions the see, right I the right thing to do is to be honest in my opinion but I feel like you got to be honest because if it starts popping up, like if you say, oh, two, and then he starts hearing about, well, there was this guy and there was that guy and then he scrolls down your Instagram and there's all this stuff going on or it's very clear like, that there was a lot of play going on on the Instagram. It's like or, they say three and then there's 10 ass shots. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, no, honey. It's more like 13 and you and I both know it. So I think that's, the, that's like, guys aren't dumb. Yeah. So you may as well tell the truth because they're going to, and then if, it, if they find, if you tell the truth and they stick around, Maybe they're one of those guys that doesn't care that much. It's mm -hmm. going to be rare. But if you lie, then it's going to be over. Then he's mm -hmm. going to think you're lying about everything. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. All right. Here's what I want to do. I want to go to 4027, Delhi. I'm going to skip one. Like, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I realize, like, how negative it is. Because, like, I think the reason, and we talked about this in the car, too. The reason why, like, 
men care, I think at least, like about low body counts is because I think they like, I'm not saying this is all men, but I'm saying that a lot of men like to have that like sense of ownership, like, oh, like this is like untouched, like no one else like saw this besides me, you know? That's big. And I think that's, that's big like, for men. I think that's like such a, I think it would like, if that were brought, if like my body count was broadcasted on my forehead or like any girl's was, then I think that would like just create more of like this society where like what do you think about that let's pause it do you think it's about ownership though that was an interesting choice of word she used to Mm -hmm. me like a guy wants to own you and he wants a woman that's like not been seen naked by another (laughs) guy i thought of immediately when they said owning her souls or stealing her soul (laughs) that's what i thought of i'm like some guys i mean sort of in a way like it's kind of this in the same way that andrew tate is would say that um, like she is my property. Mm-hmm. You, you, but you, uh, like when you say it, it kind of sounds bad. But it's like a guy kind of wants to know that like you're his. Yeah. Like what do you want? Her like to you're be- my girl. Yeah, and not belong to everybody. So in, in a way, yeah, I think she's right. Um, I think she's kind of trying to do it with a negative connotation. But I think she's right. Do you think it's about? Oftentimes people say, "Oh, the virgin. The virgin is mm-hmm. ideal. The virgin is ideal." I've been saying on here that it's not necessarily a virgin to me. Like it's somebody who pairs sex with emotion and who's had meaningful relationships and won't just sleep with someone just for a, a physical experience, but like needs that pairing of sex mm-hmm. and emotion and takes relationships seriously. Do you think the guys are really looking for that virgin or is it more my description of what I'm saying? Um, I think that most guys are realistic and know that in 2022, they're probably not going to get one. Where, where um, are all the virgins? I, I know a couple, right? And I don't know any. I Yeah, I know a couple. Um, allegedly, right? I, I wasn't there, you know? Yeah. Um, Were they the virgins that did everything else? I don't know. <laughs> this girl was very innocent. Like, just talking to her, like, she was in her 20s, and I felt like I was talking to, like, a, a 15-year-old. Oh. So I actually, I believed this girl. Um, but I think what we say on the show, the new virgin is sub five. It's, like, under yeah. five. So that, that's kind of what men, I think, what I, what I, this is, I've interviewed a lot of guys about body count, and it's basically, like, sub five is ideal. 10 is workable, like, but 10 is kind of the cutoff where they say they won't deal with them. Yeah. But I see who they actually date. So a lot of the guys, when they say 10, they're capping. Um, and they really mean 20. Even sub five, I mean, that's a very small population of women. If you think about like women who go through college now, they're already, I mean, uh, they're beyond that by the time they're out of college and 22 years old. Yeah. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, I'm from New York City, though. Yeah. So I'm speaking from that mm-hmm. lens, but yeah, mm-hmm. I would say that's pretty pretty mm-hmm. standard now. Mm-hmm. So five, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, from what this is just from like interviewing guys on the show, and yeah. like sometimes I'll ask them off camera because guys they can't say too high of a number, otherwise they kind of look like a simp. Do you know right. what I'm saying? If so like, if I say how many bodies is too many bodies, and they say like <laughs> if they they say their actual number, like guys will kind of look at them funny. Right. So from what I've gathered, it's like. And I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you what they told me, all right? Sub five is ideal. Sub 10 is like, workable. oh, that's good, workable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 10 to 15 is, it's not ideal, but they'll they'll do it. 15 to 20 is like, ah, that's nasty. But if they really like her, she'll still get away with it. Yeah. And, that's nasty. And then mm-hmm. like 30 is no man's land. <laughs> no man's land. <laughs> and like 20 is... Uh, it's hard because I want to say guys won't at 20s, but again, I see who these men are dating. I see who they're dating. I mean, I don't understand these women. Got, they, I don't know how they have this much time on their hands. Girl, so they just, got a lot of free time. There's a lot of free there's time. There's a lot of hoes, hoes got a lot of free time. God. All right, let's go to 44, 42. I'm skipping around a little bit. I'm going in order, but I'm skipping because I want to get to the chads. You what, see the it, chads? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> to, you know, even the perception of like frats, like over here at UCSB, ATO kind of has this perception of going and being like, you know, really, really hot guys, you know, are in ATO. And then uh, girls, even though they're aware of that, um, they still kind of go to those frats. And even though they know maybe those guys might not be like the best, um, they'll still go and like allow them to kind of break rules, at least initially. Of course, like once that happens and you experience that it does hurt, like, that feeling of getting hurt then you will go and say like you know when you get into like an intimate relationship that's also when you want something I want to ask your opinion on why 
young modern women repeatedly go after guys that they know are going to be heartbreakers that they know are going to leave them crying at night Narc- why is it narcissism modern women are narcissists is it just they think they're going to change them? yeah they think that they're so spe- they've been told they're special from five years old so they're like oh he hasn't wiped the last 35 girls he slept with me i'm gonna change him <clears throat> but why doesn't that lessen like that to me that like that makes sense mm-hmm. round one Mm-hmm. Right. But then like round two with right. a different guy, you don't realize, oh, that other guy cheated on all his girlfriends Girl. and me. So even though this one's also hot, I could see he's cheating on all those girls. I'm not going to be any different. Memo yeah. goes to is, is, is just like not a lot going on up here or I just literally think, well, I mean, we're sold a dream. He said he won't. <laughs> or is it the attraction is just too much? You know, like that's who they're drawn to because those guys don't care because those guys are like, this is what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. And there's an appeal to that. Um, I, I'm going to go back to narcissism. That's my final answer. I just think modern women are narcissistic, think they're special. None of it, Some of y'all didn't have brothers to bully you growing up, and it shows. It I shows. Didn't. I wish I had had an older brother, though. Like I always it. wanted an older brother. Somehow you ended up grounded. Don't know how. I had a good dad. Yeah. I had a really good dad. <laughs> Luckily, he's watching. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this, because we're from different generations. Did you ever watch like a TV show and like have a heartthrob guy in there that you were like all about? Any, any TV show? Yes, who, yes. Who was it? It was, um, okay, I had two. When I was a kid, like kid, kid, it was Taylor Lautner from okay. vam- the vampire movie, whatever that was, and Jesse Williams. Who's from that? Jesse Williams is in Grey's Anatomy. Oh, I don't watch Grey's. He's like okay. this. He's like this mixed guy with like blue eyes. He's so pretty. Are they like slightly edgy troublemaker types or? Uh, I don't remember, honestly. Um... No, I don't think he was in the show. If Are I you drawn to that type? Are you drawn to that like slightly mysterious, a little bit of edge, like in your in your real life? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm definitely drawn to guys that can protect me. So mm. I like a guy that I feel like could protect me. So sometimes does that come with that? Yeah, but yeah. but I kind of am more like I, I have like a risk meter that goes off. So sometimes I'll be like attracted to a guy, but I'm like, ah, no, he's trouble. You gotta, right. you gotta stay away from that one. Right. And then you do it. You stay away. Cause a lot of women get that risk meter and then they, they're they like, oh, look, the whole house is on I fire. Mean, Let me go it. in. I'm not, I mean, look, I've had a boyfriend that my dad didn't like, right? But I think some mm. girls will waste their entire twenties on that boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> some girls waste a couple of months, so. Is that a sign, would you tell women, like if you bring a guy home and your dad, if you've got like a good dad, you mm-hmm. have a good relationship your dad you bring a guy home and your dad's just like "Mm -mm." is that yeah no I yeah that yeah I agree my dad hated my college boyfriend hated him yeah at his core just couldn't have a good oh my gosh I was dating this guy right (laughs) and I I don't want to get into like the reasons but there was things that were happening that like just weren't great Mm -hmm. and I was like dad like do people change and he looked at me and he said yes and I was like wow okay what do you mean dad and he said they get worse over time (laughs) (laughs) and he said he said so any trait that you see now in 20 years it's gonna be 10 times worse so choose carefully and I walked away and then he's like do you like torture are you dumb (laughs) and I was like but <laughs> and yeah. I was like, what? God damn. Like, it's true, though. Yeah, he was right that I broke up with him. So <laughs> see, I grew up watching 90210. You probably don't know that show because no, um, I'm old. But there was a guy. I saw the, the new character. one. The OK, new the old one, one yeah. was the character was Dylan McKay. Old people in the chat, you know what I'm talking about. And it was played by Luke Perry, who I later met. He's since passed away. But he uh, he was had that bad boy energy like that he wasn't a bad boy in that he did fall in love here and there but he had this very like independent I don't need you you enhance my life but you're not going to make my life and I was just from a kid like oh you know that independent guy Mm -hmm. and I think like my message to guys always is like don't be that guy that like texts her constantly in the beginning Mm -hmm. who's like neat so needy it's Mm -hmm. so unattractive oh it's so unattractive oh my gosh it's so unattractive like we we want a guy that's got stuff going on on. like and happens to fit us in his schedule (laughs) right (laughs) right i I get to go to dinner yay Yay. (laughs) yeah and i had a question from a guy the other day we're gonna get to the chat right after this section guys so don't worry but i had a question the other day and a guy said well, a woman is like giving me like indecisive vibes. What, you know, what do I do? And I was like, it's done. I said, yeah, it's, she it's over. Because when doesn't. we like someone, when oh. that phone buzzes, we're like, <gasps> it's like our birthday. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. Yeah, like you go above and beyond when you like, like when you really like a guy, you go above and beyond. So mm-hmm. if she's indecisive, 
especially yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. It's done, doll. Yeah. It's done. All right. Let's get to, um, let's do 111.25, Dali. You see that? In that same block? Yeah, I got you. Okay. <laughs> Generally speaking, do you think dudes care about ambition and six financial success in a woman? Do you think they find, find that attractive? Yes. Okay. Do you think it's like a high priority for men? Mm, um, probably less successful than like them, but like still successful. Okay. Nope. Um, I think that, I mean, I get, I, okay, we're generalizing, so I'm not going to say depends. I mean, it seems as if in today's society, things are kind of shifting. It's kind of going from like, oh, the man provides all the money to, I feel like it's kind of getting a little bit closer to being equal. I mean, I would hope. So I would say, yes, they do value that because obviously you want an ambitious woman. You want okay, a woman let's that stop it. can the, stand her. Let's stop it lest the both of us need a barf bag. Um, so the, this is the delusion, right? Like, and I, this is something that I even had internalized for so much of my life that like being this independent woman was going to be valued in some way. And it's really hard for women to absorb that guys just don't care. They don't care at all. I will, okay. I will say, okay, if a guy does care, he doesn't have a job. Yeah. He's, he's looking <laughs> he's to lean looking on to, you. He's looking to live off of you, girl. <laughs> he's got, he might say he's got a job. He don't, he don't. The only other time I've heard a guy say that he cares is because um, he felt like because he was so successful, it's better to have a girl that has something to lose. Mm, so okay. like she couldn't go on the internet and like da 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 or she couldn't so but that's not being attracted to it it's just mm -hmm. like guys are risk versus reward right you know so they're like how can I mitigate this risk <laughs> right how can I <laughs> but it's not like oh her job like Oprah's so hot you know <laughs> right no, they don't care they're what like do you make butt boobs skinny yes <laughs> yeah what do you make of the equality <laughs> statement about like her saying oh, you know, I think, you know, equality is, is, is hip now. And like, I would hope guys would want this because there's equality. I feel like this, this desire that women have for like sele what I call selective equality. Mm -hmm. It's like they want, they want things to be equal when it's convenient. And then when it's not convenient, they want the upper hand. And I, there's like a lack of self-awareness in that area. Just, we just want to live in la-la land and just do anything and have no consequences forever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not too much to ask. It's like equality till the check comes at yeah. the, the restaurant. Oh. Equality till, you know, you're walking down a dark alley and someone's got to beat that guy up. You're not jumping in with your boxing gloves, honey. Oh, no. You know, oh, no. <laughs> you're hiding behind some guy. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's interesting because, you know, and, and I think what... What's been really fascinating for me going through this journey, and you've been obviously been in this space longer than I have, but just not only do you notice like a lack of self-awareness in women, but you, you acknowledge a lack of self-awareness in yourself to oh, some yeah. level. Oh yeah. It's like a self-analysis. I'm not special. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm not a unicorn. Stop <laughs> simping in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I'm not you, special. <laughs> I saw you say something the other day about the chat, how you didn't, you didn't want to get a check mark and they keep throwing you out of the chat. Is that, did you say something? Yes! <laughs> Because I don't okay, I don't know how to get a check mark on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter. Oh, I think Twitter you have to pay eight bucks a month. Oh Sorry, Elon God. Cook. And and I just don't care. So <laughs> throw her out of the chat. So I keep going in chats and they're like, get rid of this fake just pearly things account. I'm like, it's me. It's got me. one million subs and they're like, they think you're yeah. an imposter just pearly. Yeah, I love it. Coach Greg Adams threw me out the other day. Or his his mods, they blocked me. I was like, I'm blocked. And it wasn't just a temp, it was like a lifetime block. Oh, man. I was like, yeah. you got to get your check mark. So I, everybody knows it's you. I don't know how to get it. But I, don't I, I just don't it. care enough to figure it out. I love that you have a million subs and you don't care enough to get the check mark. No. That's like, what, that care. makes me like you more. No, you know what's funny? I didn't even get my 100K plaque. I was like, they can see it on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Like, why would I get it? Well, I get like, a plaque? I didn't know that. Yeah. You oh, you know, I'm going to get mine, Deli. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. I, guess, I, want I guess I get one on a million, too, but I'm like, I mean. You know that's... what? You get, girlfriend, you get your million plaque. That's like an Emmy. <laughs> you get that and you display it. Maybe I'll it. get it. Maybe I'll you get it. You we'll display it like an Oscar. All right. We have one more from this, and um, then I want to go to the chat. So let's go to 242.35, and then I want to go to chat, and then we're going to get to the fat shaming tweet. It's Ooh. awesome. Okay. You know? I want to add a little bit to this. I don't think we're trying to say that men don't have struggles. 
But I think the problem is that women also have struggles, and those struggles need to be taken as seriously as men's struggles. Well, I, I, and like, yeah, of course. Not like both men and women. In society, it just sucks that like, well, as actually, women, I, our struggles aren't taken as seriously. And well, a lot mm, has changed, but like, it's we just still need a freeze frame. Let's I pause mean, that. If somebody just has a freeze frame on my face and yours in the reaction, it was like, how do you say that women? How do you verbalize as a female? that women's struggles are not taken as seriously as men's in 2023. Oh my, all we hear about is women's struggles. Oh my, like we have March, every time women whine, there's a march. There's a slut <laughs> march. True. There's a, who do you think all the teachers, this is, this, is, this is more political, but all the teachers that were marching, it's not the men, it's the women. We just mm -hmm. march and they're like, listen to us, our problems, blah, blah, blah. Cause they're talking about things that don't exist, like the pay gap. They're talking about, well, they're talking about abortion. Oh, that was the other one. The, they love to talk about abortion as if it's not me. another living thing growing inside a woman's yeah, body. They just... love to dismiss that. We're going to get to some politics at the end. <laughs> I'm going to suck you in in some way. But, <laughs> but that's, that's the brainwashing, though, yeah. because they've been told. The, the, the reality is that these women have been told that women's issues aren't taken as seriously. And rather than take a minute to actually think about it and say, well, wait. Like what you just said, there's a women's march. There's a, there's a, there, you don't have, where's the men's march? Yeah, that's if there was a men's march, by the way, there would be massive societal outrage. It would be like, oh my God, what, why are these men doing this? This is so misogynistic. I it would be you, the end. I bet you never heard of men's rights activists. Like, I mean, I hadn't before I'd been in this space. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, whining, whining, poor me, boo freaking who I'm a woman. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and it's, what's interesting to me about it is that in the same breath as it's the boo-hoo, it's like, oh my God, I'm this, I'm that, but I'm also an empowered independent woman who doesn't need a man. How do you reconcile, I'm an empowered independent woman who doesn't need a man, and I'm going to whine all the time, everything is, the world is against me, everyone's against me, somebody help me. It's just, it's like, pick one, honey. Yeah. Yeah, and the half the time these empowered independent women make $35,000 a year at Tesco. So it's just like, <laughs> are you empowered? Yeah, that's... <gasps> See, we had a conversation about that last time with the CEOs. You were like, there aren't that many CEOs, Jed. No, it's, a, it's a small percentage. It's a small percentage. So most girls are just average chicks saying they're boss babes. <laughs> <laughs> boss babe at McDonald's. All right, let's move to the I chat. I work in human resources. <laughs> what does that even mean half the time? What do they, these people do? I, I, every human resource person I meet, I'm like, what do you do? Did you see a Twitter when Elon fired all the people doing nothing? It was mostly the women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure. Yeah, and if they did stay there, Asian, come on. <laughs> Did you see the picture where it was like all the people left and it was all guys? It was a room yeah, full of guys? Yeah, it was, no, it was one or two Indi Indian chicks and my dad owns a software company. I'm like, that is on point. Oh, is that what he does? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's like if he does have women work for him, they typically are more Asian. Mm, they just they just work hard in that culture in India. They do. Yeah. They do work hard. Well, I have culture. a lot of respect for that culture. Hard work. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get to the chat. Uh, do we have a bunch? Yeah. Okay, let's do them. Uh, the first question is for Pearl. Pearl was a Muslim lady crazier than they actually showed her to be. She claims they made her out to look crazy. Jed, I wish you were on that panel. Wait, what Muslim lady? I'm assuming she's talking about the panel. Was there a, mu oh, was there a Muslim? Oh, on the Vice chick? panel. Who was Muslim? I didn't see anyone with was that. It the t was it the? W it might have been the woman on the bottom left they're talking about, but I'm not 100% on the bottom sure. Left? I thought she said something about culture related to. I could be wrong though. Okay, I'll tell you one thing. They did the libs a service. I promise to God they were 10 times crazier in person. <laughs> I heard that everybody's asking for the full video footage to be released. I hope they do. I hope they release all of it. I have no qualms with that. And they're saying you were crazy and you're saying they were crazy. So everybody, less the only solution, but there's a reason why aren't they really, see, you couldn't have been, the conservatives couldn't have been crazier because then they would have released the footage. It's gotta be the other side that they gotta protect. Look at, I mean, I would say the footage, they, they actually did an okay job of showing both sides. Mm -hmm. My only qualm was you cut out the freak outs, like the girl in the front and that freaking Eli, that dude <laughs> had these like freak outs and Eli, he looked at me and was like, call me a man. And I, or it was, it was either to me or it was to Sydney. I don't remember who, but I remember I was this close to being like, you're a dude, but I, <laughs> Well, it is a man. It is. It's it is. Man. I'm so tired of these 
he she's with mental disorders like I, it's like you guys want me to reason with crazy people. Yeah. And the more I'm on, li liberalism is a disease, and you guys are all crazy with it mental is a disorders. Liberalism is a it, it is a disease, a disease of the mind. How do I get on the View? I want to go on the View. Let me talk to you. You're dying to go on the View just once. <laughs> I know. Not, I will cause havoc. You know what I was thinking this morning? I was thinking, can you imagine Andrew Tate on the View with those ladies? <laughs> Come on, tell me you wouldn't pay for that. That would be the. Ah. I mean, it would blow. Oh man. Can you imagine a full episode of that? Okay, Deli, I know you're waiting. The View ladies, you're invited on my show. I don't think you're not coming on your show. <laughs> you're invited. <laughs> you're invited. We'll fly you out. You'd be shouted down too. You'd be forget it. Your mic would Look be cut. They could. They could shout down at me. And I, I just give them the mic. Okay, crazy. <laughs> You're like, I'm gonna cut that clip. <laughs> just shout me down to cut, cut that. It'll be unedited. Yeah, I did. I like crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did when I went on. Go ahead. All right, uh, we have a ten dollars from Brock. He said, "My favorite two ladies with common sense in a world where nothing makes sense. Keep up the good work you do, and Pearl, you need to go in on Hafiz next time as he's very condescending towards you." Oh. People were saying that in the chat. They were, they were yeah. mad about that. Yeah, that was that was a that was like the worst day. I almost had a that was like the worst day. <laughs> I had a feast on here, but like early on. Yeah. And the chat was so. They were like, "Get him off! Get!" Him. I couldn't believe it. I was. Like, I mean, wow. I like Hafiz. It's something like personal. I just don't think he maybe is aware of how condescending mm. he can be. Um, I mean, I think like when you start to go personal and you compare yeah. me to porn stars, OnlyFans models, and Derek Jackson. I think that's, it just is like kind of below the belt where it's like, I, I don't go in and say, like talk about your personal life. Yeah, that's dirty. Yeah, so. Mm, he played dirty. Okay. There we have another one, a couple more actually. Yeah. Um, two bit user said Western women are like McDonald's over 1 billion served. Pearl, get <laughs> get Sydney on your show. You handled half feels better on valuetainment than ever before. There you go. Yeah, I, we've reached out to Sydney, by the way, audience, just so you know, um, to see if she'll come on. But she's not here, and I, I kind of want to do it in person, mm -hmm. so we'll see. But any more, and then we're going to go to fat shaming. Yeah. Uh, it says, okay, society from Numbers Guy, society admonishes and does not celebrate people doing the things that are easy. Like women acquiring sexual partners, on the flip side, men acquiring partners is hard and rightfully celebrated. Yep, that was your point that you made earlier. Okay, I want to get to um, the fat shaming. This is a uh -huh. great tweet. This is number two. Could you pull that up, Deli? It's uh, Pearl's tweet, which I loved. <laughs> Let's pull it up. I have it here somewhere. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, here we go. It says, thank you to the internet for fat shaming me into losing 15 pounds this year. I'll keep fat shaming the whales <laughs> to help them too. What I love about this, though, is like everyone gets so offended when you talk about obesity. And here you are saying the exact opposite like do you actually is that honest is that an honest emotion you have yeah no and tell me about what happened well it was when i started the show it's kind of like when you get on camera you, you see everything <laughs> and i was like oh i'm a little chunkier than i thought <laughs> and i've never been like fat or obese like uh sorry that's not true i was obese by like five pounds for like two months and then I lost it but mm. but when I started the show I, I wasn't fat I wasn't obese but I was like ah, okay, I could cut back on my eating and you know I'd get comments here and there and I'd be like ah, I should I should really work on that so in the course of the year I wanted to lose 25 pounds I only lost 15 but I'm on the way that's and, good 15 is good yeah and so um and I had a lot of acne too when I started and so that was great Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I just had a lot of bad habits, so I just decided to work on it. And my issue is whenever I fat shame the whales, they're like, you're not thin, thin enough to be fat shaming me. And I'm like, well, I get fat shamed too. And, and you work on it and you try to get better. Mm -hmm. But it's like fat people think they're above being made fun of. I can be made mm -hmm. fun of because I'm a ginger. Men can be made fun of for being short. Everyone else can be made fun yeah. of. Why are you special? Why are yeah. you special? And the worst part is you can change it. Men can't change being short. Mm -hmm. but you sure as hell can change not eating 10 Krispy Kremes in a day, Rebecca. <laughs> well, the reason that they get away with that is because society has now labeled obesity as healthy. And with good reason, because society, remember, all these media outlets, and this is where you get into the matrix, but all of these media outlets in large part are funded by pharma. Mm -hmm. And what helps pharma? What helps you to become somebody who's dependent on medication for life and all of this stuff? Well, you have to be unhealthy. So now this new, like, obesity is the new healthy is being glorified by media 
because they want an unhealthy population that's then relying on drugs, that's relying on all these things, that's more likely to be depressed, that's more likely to be uh, someone who's not self-sufficient, a weaker society that you can control. It's all connected. And women are just falling. What I think is really interesting about you, though, is it's not easy to take the criticism and have that reaction. Like, it's not. If for somebody to say, like, oh, you... You, you know, whatever, you're, you're a little chunky, say they mm-hmm. said, or whatever. And for you to say, oh, you know what? I am a little chunky. Let me <laughs> stop doing that. You know, or maybe I could do that. That's not easy for mm-hmm. people to do. How did, wh- what, what do you think went right in your life that you were able to have that reaction and not get offended, defiant, nasty, mm-hmm. and then go eat a donut? Well, I mean, I would get offended at first. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know. That's not getting offended, though. That what hurt, you just hurt, did. It hurt. But yeah. then it's just kind of like, well, why did it hurt? Because they're right. Yeah. Nothing hurts if That's they're right. not correct. That's right. You know? So um, I think, I, I don't know. I just was like, you know what? They're right. I want to do something about it. So I bought this like meal plan from this guy called Cooking with Chris. And he's on Twitter. And he's actually, it was like probably the best meal plan I've ever bought. Sometimes mm. I still go off it. That's why I haven't lost 25. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually really good. It's hard when you travel. Traveling is not friendly to you know good I actually lose weight when I'm traveling oh, but it's okay. but it's because I'll be busy I'll be so busy that I don't eat you forget to eat yeah so <laughs> it's like like a lot of times I'll gain it when I get back because it's not mm. it's not like done in a healthy way you know it's like you get back and but you gotta like store up again I know my, I get it my biggest problem is I drink sugar coffee in the morning but I've quit mm. I'm now like roughly 20 ish days sober from coffee oh wow <laughs> coffee, that's hard to quit yeah. it's like sugar yeah sugar is hard to but quit. coffee is like I know some people can drink it in like a healthy way. I'm just not that person. I like the milkshakes in the morning. I like, so if I'm going to drink coffee, I'm like, there's no point in trying to do it a healthy way because right. I won't drink it. Right. So that is. <laughs> well, props to you for having that reaction. Um, not a lot of people have that reaction. And I, I don't know like what you looked like before. I don't, I'm just looking at you now. You look great. But I, I think it's, I think it speaks to character to be able to like process something. Like even when I started on here and like people were saying stuff to me like commentary wise when I was like in the in the space and I was like you know with Rolo the first time I I had to like kind of process that step back and be like well let me think about what I just said Mm -hmm. like self it's not easy to do that because then you have to like admit you were wrong or admit you were doing something in your life that wasn't good for you not Mm -hmm. easy I want to get to uh Drew Fallow and Dylan Mulvaney you know Dylan Mulvaney Mm -mm. okay let's go I know the Drew girl she's like Uh, (laughs) the whatever podcast is actually here to say thank you for reacting and sent a bunch of hearts Oh, awesome. Love your show. Brian, we're trying to get you on. We, you know that, though. You know. Okay. Let's go to uh, Drew Afalo and Dylan Mulvaney. You see that? It's number three. Dylan Mulvaney. Oh, you're going to see Dylan Mulvaney. You know Dylan Mulvaney. I might. I, I'm not good with names. So it's a biological so. male that is on hormones and all oh, sorts of dear. stuff and did like a, a girl weirdo. power segment. A weirdo. Let's, Let's just call it. them what they are, weirdos. Oh, man. Let's play it. You ready? said multiple times on multiple occasions that I'm never going to drag women the same way I drag men. Mm. Um, and I've said that because uh, men do that enough for all of us. Oh, babe, uh, they, they, they got they that covered. Enough. Yeah. But I will say <laughs> there help. are women out there that are trying to take us down. There are. Yeah, and I have many of them. It feels like now that I am, you know, I'm still new to like girlhood, to womanhood. Yeah. I, there does feel like this scarcity complex of yeah. like, there's not enough to go around. And then turfs don't get me started. <laughs> okay. So but, she's, you know, Drew's <laughs> podcast. It's, been, it's like great for content for me because it's just a hot mess. So I just like pull. But, you course know, this a, is the conversation. Of course about, a whale is talking. It's never the. She, by the way, has talked about obesity a number of times. She'll say, like, I have body neutrality. You know, she doesn't have body positivity. She wants Girl, to just shut be- up and get on the treadmill. <laughs> she wants to shut view it up. as a vessel. I'll, I'll show you. What I, I'll give you my meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> She's so, trying to help you, girlfriend. She's going to give you the meal plan. Just saying. But, yeah, there's like a there's a like. You know, I'm not happy with what I look like, so I'm just going to pretend like doesn't matter kind of attitude. And that's the thing. Like, I honestly think, and you know what? I, I'm a really long-term thinker. And so a big reason that I wanted to get my eating habits under control, because that's just something that has never in my life come natural. I've always, it's always been easy for me to work out, go to the gym. That's easy. What's yeah. always been hard for me is sugar. I, I freaking love sugar. I, lo- I do, too. I love, I love I dessert. Too. I love pizza. <laughs> like, I just love that stuff. And I've gotten slowly, like, better over time, right? And it's kind of funny. I look at myself, like, 10 years ago. I was so I, I was thinner because but I was like I was so much worse um and she freaking I forgot where I was going with that I lost my train of thought you lost it okay yeah cool. we'll get we, you'll get it back and then just interrupt me but what do you make of first of all you've got you know 
goes without saying, odd to have a biological man on talking about womanhood oh. and girlhood. I mean, what does one even say? But this is an interesting, this is a thing that she talks about all the time where you can't drag women. And if you're a woman who like criticizes women, <sighs> you're a problem. And she's talking, I mean, she's talking about you. She's talking about me. She's yeah. talking about people like us who see bad behavior among women and criticize it the hate, same way we criticize men. I hate stupid people. So I will criticize stupid people. I don't give a shit if they're man, women, or trans. Uh, stupid people just irritate me. Why are you so special that you can't be called out for being stupid? <sighs> so it's for you, it's just as simple as that. Yeah, stupid, annoying, <laughs> weirdos. <laughs> yeah, you gotta check out some of, you should go, Do you, I, I'm not on TikTok for political reasons, but you should look up Dylan Mulvaney's content because Dylan did a, we did it on this show. There's a whole thing about how he was taking the hormones and his like transformation into a woman. Real weird. I want to, I want to say something. I don't want trans people in sports or in our locker rooms or in our bathrooms. That's it. She said her piece. People, people will be like, Oh, the bathrooms is okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. Thank you. Yeah, women have a problem with that. It's a legitimate concern. It's and for some, you know, it, and then then those women are afraid to speak out. But in many respects, it becomes a safety concern for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crazy that women feel bullied that they can't express that. I want to get to Michael Sartain and Rolo. Um, let's go to number four, and then we're going to get to the Vice Feminist panel. But number four is, I have a caveat to what they're saying. I'm actually going to ask Rolo about it next time I see him, which is in a couple of weeks. Let's play it. Women make rules for betas and break rules for alphas. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If you find that to be offensive, I won't even debate this with you. This is mm -hmm. absolutely, unassailably, irrevocably true. I have, cannot tell you how many times I meet a woman who says, I am going to make men wait five dates to have sex with me and mm -hmm. go and have sex with their ex okay. or go have sex mm -hmm. with some male stripper or fuck VIP host that they met or some bartender the first night. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely Un irrevocably true. Can you talk about this? Yes, and how it's in yes absolutely. I can. Uh, so th this, uh, there's like kind of th three parts to this. The first one is my iron rule to Masi number three, which is any woman that makes you wait for sex, the sex is never worth the wait. Now, that is not about, ba oh, you know, push for a same night lay. That has nothing to do with right. it. It has everything to do with what I call the desire dynamic. Genuine desire. Okay, make rules. so I want to get your take on that first, before I even say anything. What do you think? Do you think that's there's truth in that, that women will make some guys wait for sex, but if they're genuinely super attracted to a guy, that guy's not going to have to wait? Yeah, I think that's true. I think, I mean, when you think about it, uh, the men that like you've had sex with, it's not like you, they all waited the exact same amount of time, mm -hmm. right? So some guys had to wait longer. Some guys got it quicker. So uh, yeah, I think if you have genuine desire for a guy, you sleep with him quicker, typically, yeah. Here's the glitch in that for me, and I'm gonna ask Rollo about this. Maybe I asked him already, I can't remember, mm -hmm. he's been on here so many times, but the glitch in it for me is that if the, if the, if the goal is a woman who, let's say, either is a virgin mm -hmm. or who's really picky about who she sleeps with mm -hmm. or values her body, all that stuff, that woman may really be sexually attracted to you, but she may be like nervous to have sex for the first time, mm -hmm. or like that girl may delay everybody mm -hmm. and you may just be like mm -hmm. one of the people getting delayed so they have to have their feelers out for those women because mm -hmm. if that's the girl you want she may not be playing a game with you she may just be like scared like the first time i had sex i was very i made him wait a while i was totally into him mm -hmm. we were dating but i was i was like scared i was mm -hmm. like this is gonna hurt i'm, a, I'm worried <laughs> you know i was going through all the girl yeah. emotions mm -hmm. so like the, i feel like that girl and maybe there's maybe it's because they're like not a lot of them in mm -hmm. this day and age but I don't want them um, to forget about them. I think their point is there usually is a guy somewhere that even the virgin will break the rule for. Mm. Even even the virgin, like, because I'm sure there's maybe men that did more than that guy did for you, mm -hmm. right? That maybe right. waited longer and did more and did all this stuff, mm -hmm. and you still didn't sleep with them, right? Like, it's not like the guy that just put in the most investment got laid, right? right. So I think that's like his whole point is. Usually, if a girl's making you wait and doing all these rules, like she's just not that into not you that into because you. that's fair. It's like if even if she's a virgin, like I think guys can kind of feel even if maybe she's saying no and like I don't like they can feel if a girl like really really, really wants them. to, you know? Yeah. So that's I, the vibe too. Yeah. You want to, but you're and that's nervous. what they're talking about is like genuine desire, um, where it's it's almost it's so hard for them not to say no. Like most of the time they won't. 
Yeah. If, if you're that guy to her. It's true. I mean, attraction for a man is a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. If you're physically attracted to a guy, mm-hmm. it like, that's the guy that you're sitting waiting for that text to come in. That's the guy you're breaking plans with. You know, oh, grandma, I can't make your 80th birthday party. I have to go for a walk with this guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's true. You just like, it's like you can't help yourself. Mm-hmm. You like need to be around them. You want to mm-hmm. be around them. I'm just trying to like speak to, because sometimes I'll get messages from girls that are like, well, I wait, mm-hmm. but I really like want to wait till marriage. Like, mm-hmm. I could be totally into a guy but I'm just like nervous or and so they still exist and I just want them to have a voice yeah you know? and I think I think men are just like you know they deal with probabilities and not possibilities right. and most and most of the girls that they they meet aren't virgins and to right. men it's like well if you're not a virgin like what are we That's what true. are we waiting for yeah, yeah like it's one thing if she's a virgin or whatever but it's religious it's, some other yeah angle. but most mm-hmm. girls as we said they're they're not below they're five not. so they're like what what are you making me wait for? And like, yeah. and the que- and like to men, they're like, has someone else gotten here quicker than I have? Right. And I'll, like a lot of the times, the answer is yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's true. All right, I want to get to the feminist panel. Then we're gonna go check back in with the chat. So, audience, you remember I covered the Vice panel last week. By the way, that episode did amazing. People loved it. They loved seeing you. They loved seeing Sydney go. I basically played like mm-hmm. the whole thing and reacted to it. What I didn't know is that there were tweets that came in after the fact that were fascinating. So we're going to go to those tweets and then Pearl's going to react. So let's go to number five. Um, Let's go to that first tweet. Pull that one up for me, Deli, if you can. I don't remember the order that I have them here. Which one is that? Oh, yeah. So this is from Lives of TikTok. Panelists at a debate about feminism, which included Eli. That's the biological male, are claiming they went through violence because they had to hear ideas and opinions that they disagree with. So this is what Eli, the biological male, and you'll remember Eli is, you'll notice the short blonde hair. We covered a long segment. Eli was really upset. This is what Eli says. I don't trust media, nor do I think it's helpful to platform fascists. That's you, like Vice did. When Vice said they were having us debate some anti-trans and conservative speakers. By the way, did Vice say that? Because if Vice said, oh, you're anti-trans, that's kind of, they shouldn't have done that. But I didn't think they meant actual racist, anti-Semitic, neo-Nazi supporters like Sidney Watson or Pearl Davis, you're mentioned by name. However, the platform was going to happen one way or another. And the least I could do was prevent the anti-feminists from spreading any more disinformation, there's your talking point that came from the top down, than they already have. I believe some of the far-right speakers made our points for us promoting anti-sex, anti-queer, and anti-women conspiracies that very few people actually believe. So that was the response. And then that woman... Uh, you guys will remember her. She was in the bottom left. She was kind of like horrified that somebody would have gun rights and heaven forbid a woman would exercise Second Amendment rights. She says, thank you, Eli, for your care, safety, and protection. We went through violence. Talk to me, Pearl. Oh, my God. Wait, is it that? Can I see? Yeah, Can I take pull it. This? Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's who I thought. This chick. Yeah, we went through. That's yeah, this one. lady. Oh, my God. So talk to me about these people that... and and and. How somebody could say it was violence for them to hear a dis- you know I thought violence was like people that went to war. <laughs> <laughs> you know how, how soft y'all look for having a conversation, and that's violence. Oh my god, this girl had a whole freak out that they cut. I, I can't remember the girl so, who's calling it violence. Yeah, the the yo whatever. It looks to me like she dis- disabled her unless she blocked me but she disabled her account since then because she was you know strong empowered woman who couldn't handle a tweet. <laughs> yeah like she literally was yelling at, I don't I wish I could I wish we were doing this interview closer to when we actually did mm-hmm. it but I just remember her like yelling at everyone and they she had this big ass freak out during it and they just cut the whole thing and I'm like girl they edited you good they didn't make you look half as bad as they could have. She had a freak out what I would call a freak out that they did air although I guess comparatively it wasn't when she was like carrying on oh do you really want to ruin women? Uh, Remember when she turned around, she was all sweating, perspiring. Yeah. And Eli, they're just a bunch of weirdos with mental disorders. So I'll just let them be triggered weirdos. What's important to me about this, too, is we talk about leftism here all the time. But this is the modern leftist. You know, they can't sit in a room with people who see the world differently without feeling somehow oppressed by it, without feeling like you were violent, without feeling somehow that they've been harmed by hearing a different perspective when the whole point of the panel was to have different perspectives. Like, what did you go for? And it was like two on 10. Like, let's just be real. I mean, they gave us two other conservatives, but one was a trans. And and like, actually, I'll, I'll even use 
her pronoun for her because I liked her. But she, she, the one the, in the red was actually nice. Like the, but she didn't really talk much. And the freaking the one girl in the front with the like the gun rights girl. Oh yeah, she. She act- was still. She was still ish. They're both kind of. She ish wasn't conservative. conservative. Yeah, I'm like so. Me she was pro life. Yeah, but when it came to feminism, she yeah. had that stuff running through her veins. That and then I, I am so tired of fat chicks complaining about beauty standards. I, why, why are you complaining about a beauty standard if you're fat? You could lose the weight. Like this is in your control. Sorry, I have a, I have thoughts about this panel. No, it was it was. If people didn't watch the panel, you should go watch it. Um, I know you saw my coverage of it. But you should really. It, it's it's a it's a really important display of what's going on from the feminist left because they they just they want you shut down. And the goal here was, of course, to come out of it and make it so that another organization wouldn't want to have you on what, because somehow you were going to harm the people you were going to make them feel like you know they had been you know belittled and the goal is to then bully those organizations so that the conservatives don't get invited mm-hmm. and then it's just this monotone you know one view for everyone these are the group thinkers you know this is how they work yeah look at I, and i would go back honestly when i go into a panel even if i know they're going to out like try to edit me poorly I just try to still be likable and funny, even mm-hmm. if even if you edit me bad, you can't out edit funny, and right. that's that's always what I try to do. And honestly, you try, you did do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl, they were crazy. When she was like, "Oh, you know, you're you're the pretty girl," you were like, "Are you thank, calling me pretty?" Thank you, thank you. And then she's like, "No, I'm not." And she's backhanded. And I'm like, "Thank you very much." <laughs> I am the beauty standard art I should be having you- modeling content. <laughs> And that's the thing, you came off likable, which they, they couldn't they couldn't they couldn't change it. They, they couldn't can. make you mean. And that's the thing about content. Like people don't understand. You could be so smart, you could you could know everything, but if you're not entertaining and likable, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like you won't have a you won't have a big platform if you're not entertaining and likable. That's what I say about politicians running for president. Like you you just won't make it happen. You won't no. get the votes. Yeah, it's, you won't get the votes. It's sad because I don't think it's maybe the most indicative of who is, you know, the most knowledgeable or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's just uh, adapter. adapter. I want to ask you before we wrap today, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to go to the chat one more time, but I want to ask you about the Matrix stuff. Uh, I, I don't know how much you care about your like a red pill lens on politics. Is this something that you're interested in? Are you paying attention to things like, you know, the World Economic Forum or digital currencies or mandates? How much do you care about that stuff? Um, well, I don't think it'll ever be like a center, like a center point of my channel, but I'm learning more about I'm interested in it. So mm-hmm. I'm open to hearing about this stuff. From what I understand, this is this is what I know about the matrix. There's a group of people allegedly, that are Satanists and super rich that apparently do these worship thingies in the woods that Alex Jones found out about. And there were some, and that's why they censor Alex Jones, because he's right about a lot of it, allegedly. And then there's, apparently, they push policies that will go towards population control Mm -hmm. and automation. So, for example, abortion was pushed by them and like because it was eugenics and it was founded by a racist and all that stuff and then on top of that it was like immigration like the reason they didn't want the wall and everyone was freaking out about that Mm -hmm. was because it's human trafficking and then apparently they i've heard they drink the blood of kids i don't know if that's real (laughs) i don't know that like to make them look young or something and they traffic or, or just have sex with underage girls at the island um and apparently the world economic forum also pushes these policies um, through the shot, apparently that'll make you like infertile or something, and and apparently <laughs> wow, this is quite or, a, this is quite or, a story or drop dead, um, and yeah, this is what I know so far. I don't know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. This is just a so that's they, they a different. Always, they always say pro regurgitates. This is me regurgitating. That's a different <laughs> version of what I know from the major. Okay, but okay. you should things that I would say. You know, because you are somebody out there sharing a controversial opinion, mm-hmm. and you know, we know that controversial is fine as if it's towing the line of what Mm -hmm. you know media and you know they all want you to say but yours isn't yours is going against the grain Mm -hmm. so that panel you did is a manifestation of what's going on right now Mm -hmm. which is like you you show up in good faith to have a debate Mm -hmm. and they try to shut you down and if they can't shut you down they try to make it so that you're ostracized after but this world economic forum you know my advice is always to people you know who have a red pill lens on dating and relationships is when you look at politics, like all of this stuff coming down the pike is to control you. You know, mm-hmm. we talk about digital currencies. We talk about electric cars. We talk about the World Economic Forum who says you'll have nothing and you will be happy. 
if you you're you're somebody who obviously cares about freedom you're operating your own business you've got mm -hmm. your own channel you're speaking mm -hmm. your own mind you're the enemy mm -hmm. you are the enemy i'm the enemy anyone who cares about their freedom is the enemy so it is important i'm glad you're like looking into it you know you don't want to fall down a conspiratorial trap a little but bit there do you is, think they drank the kids blood i would say no on that okay. um that's not something i've heard what i do hear Pizza about gate. them is that there is there is there you go what i do what i do know is that there is a commitment to take people's freedoms away mm -hmm. and part of your freedom is your ability to do a show like you do oh yeah and speak your mind so they're coming i mean they're coming for anyone who doesn't tell a line yeah we'll see maybe i'm next maybe i'm deep i don't know i was just like you know what i was broke last year with no followers i'll just go back it'll be okay <laughs> <You're not> <laughs> Oh, well, I did what I could. <laughs> I can't and with they, you. You're and they too funny. Like, yeah. Okay. Mom, dad, I'm moving home. <laughs> <laughs> I love your attitude because you, and maybe this is one of the reasons that you've been so successful is that you have this attitude of like, whatever will be, will be. <laughs> nothing's gonna break me i'll be fine i'm gonna laugh through it all that's yeah. a that's a really important trait or the other thing is doing things i would say mentality i would rather do something badly than not do it at all and a lot yeah. of people are afraid to do try. things because like oh i'm afraid i'm gonna lose this debate or i'm afraid i'm gonna not you know is know enough or blah blah it's just like i'd rather do it and do it badly and get better and next time do it better yeah like, yeah it's all about getting better that's true that's 100 percent true delhi we're gonna close with you okay uh the purple pill podcast uh, shout out to pearl for hitting one million big things everyone goes purple pill in the end uh whatever podcast says it's crazy if men slash people in the red pill said the equivalent stuff will be canceled and unplatformed yes you have many have been yeah i mean sorry female privilege i don't know what to tell you <laughs> it's true though it's, yeah it's true AC said, just found Jed last week through Pearl. Love you both. I'm 42. Made a lots of bad choices. I wish I had women like you in my life while growing up. You have us now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got $11 from Vivron. I'm liberal, but we have been deeply enjoying your content for different perspectives. Haven't missed any episode. Also, I went to college with Jeremy. He's so smart. It's been a while, but I tell him I said hi. He is. My husband is so smart. It's like he's my smarter half. Mm -hmm. It's just his brain is just, it's insane. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. We have a uh, super chat from Craig. He said, greetings from Melbourne, Florida. Thank you, ladies, for addressing these topics. Since y'all are women, you will likely reach more females than your male counterparts in the red pill community. Um, got one from Up North Society. Keep doing your thing, guys. Started following Pearl at 30K followers. Videos of Andrew wow. Tate don't look good now, but <laughs> innocent until he proven guilty. <laughs> And it's the last one. That's good. Well, thank you. You came back. I love it. I love talking to you. I love talking to you because you're just not afraid to be like, I'm figuring it out. Yeah. You know, there's like an energy to you about like, I'm human. I'm figuring it out. Whatever happens, happens, which is awesome because everyone in this business is so serious all the time. It's like, I just want to be like, live your life, like laugh a little, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I love I just, it. Well, it's just like... If you're not having fun, what's the point? Right. Like, what, what is the point if you're not having fun doing it? Mm. And mm. a lot of people will ask me, like, why did you start the channel? Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, I, I thought the topics were interesting. I was having fun. And I like learning what's true and what's not true in the world. Yeah. So. Well, read up on the World Economic Forum. Maybe we'll have a little debate about that next time you come here. But, yeah. Great to have you here. Thanks for I having love it. me. And audience, we have Zuby on Monday. It's going to be fabulous. We're going to talk to Zuby about the Matrix. We're also going to talk to Zuby about advice for men. As you may notice, Zuby is in tip-top shape, and he's also blowing up everywhere. So we're going to have him. We're going to break down. I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>